ape-to-man image. Everybody's seen it on a TV show, a t-shirt, you name it. Yep, the most iconic evolutionary image known is a fraud. This week on Creation Magazine Live. Welcome to Creation Magazine Live. My name is Richard Fangrad. And I'm Calvin Smith. Now, our topic this week on Creation Magazine Live is it has to do with probably the most popular, iconic, evolutionary image that people know. You know this one. Yeah. It's the famous Ape to Man series of drawings that we commonly see. We're going to review one of the most published modern uh, pictorial icons of evolution and show that it is fraudulent based right. on known inaccuracies and false information. Yeah, I mean, we see this all the time, right? More and more t-shirts, coffee mugs, kids shows. It, it's so yeah. iconic now that it's used for comedic purposes. Um, like, like the famous one showing the last guy, you know, hunched over his computer, like that's the last stage of evolution. Right. Of course, you can find a picture like that pretty well promoting any sport or activity, uh, like the last guy or gal in the picture, they'll, they'll be playing golf or cricket or whatever. Someone's trying to promote, you know, it, it's just the best or most evolved. And right, the, yeah. Uh, now, many people don't seem to understand that this popular image has racist roots mm -hmm. and is a, and a, and it's really an extension of the once common, often distorted comparisons found in both scientific publications and popular literature of apes and African and Caucasian heads. That's right. Um, the, I, this idea got started when Darwin suggested an unbroken evolutionary chain of life from simple molecules to humans. And so this chain analogy gave birth to the idea of supposed missing links in the chain, an analogy still used today. Unfortunately for evolutionists, instead of a chain, what the fossil record actually shows is many groups of life forms with large gaps or, or holes in the supposed chain between the two of them. Right, and, and regardless, this so-called great chain of being mm -hmm. is still presented as fact, and evolutionists still believe that given enough time, more fossil discoveries are all that's needed to locate the many missing links, right. so-called, that they think must exist. Now, we, we did a show on the so-called transitional fossils, or missing links, way back in season two, episode 22, and for those of you who want an in-depth look at, at the variety of so-called missing links, uh, but, but what we have, what, what we want to concentrate on today is the so-called chain from ape to man that is right. so often portrayed in that famous uh, image. Mm -hmm. So missing link claims have uh, come and gone, but that idea seems to be, you know, well, that they're there or were there, and we just, just need to keep looking through, you know, some more uh, rocks. We're going to find the evidence of them. Um, now, as, as prize missing links like Lucy or Tiktaalik kind of come along, you know, they have yeah. a big bunch of hype, and then they kind of quietly fall off the wagon as even evolutionists abandon them. Right. Every now and then, a new missing link discovery claim is made, and of course, this just reinforces this belief. Right, yeah. Now, this progression chain, as as we've said, seen everywhere from, from book covers to magazine articles to, to cartoons, mm -hmm. is a drawing depicting part of this chain, namely human evolution mm -hmm. from primitive, stooping, ape-like creature progressing to a modern human. The progression is usually pictured in four to six steps, but sometimes as many as, th as, many as 30 uh, are shown. But you might be wondering, where did the picture idea come from originally? Right. Let's well, one, about of, that. one of the earliest examples of the chain was completed by Brooklyn College paleontologist Eric Slakecher. His rendition shows 30 links from fish to amphibians, reptiles, mammals, primates, and at the top of the evolutionary progression, modern humans. And you can see that diagram on your screen there. Well, the scenario pictured is a little different from what is proposed today, but it does include some animals still touted as evolutionary links, such as uh, Samoria, the lizard-looking thing there in the diagram. It's also notable that the common ancestor of humans is a modern ape, not an ape-like ancestor, and the first human looks pretty much like modern man. Right. Now, a, a clear gap is shown to exist between apes and humans, and really, you could line up today's living animals and produce a diagram close to, very close to this one. That's right. So when we get back, we're going to reveal where the first uh, ape to man image uh, first appeared and go into more details. 
Every time I hear of Neanderthal man, I can't help but feel sorry for the poor guy. Initially reconstructed to look like some apish brute, it took 44 years before a reanalysis of the fossils revealed that Neanderthal man's anatomy was very similar to yours and mine. Neanderthals buried their dead, which isn't the sort of behaviour you'd expect from an animal. What's more, discovery of ornaments, tools and stone-tipped spears reveal a high level of sophistication. Neanderthals made their own superglue from pitch and flute-like structures found with their remains suggest they enjoyed music. But what did Neanderthal man really look like? In recent years, researchers have answered this question by using computerized reconstructions, commonly used in forensic science. These studies show that Neanderthal man looked remarkably similar to you and I. If he was dressed in a suit and walked past you in the street, you probably wouldn't notice him. To find out more from Creation Ministries International, visit our website, creation.com. Just tune in. This week we're talking about why the ape to man image that you see everywhere, the most iconic evolutionary image, is false. Right. <laughs> now, the modern ape to man uh, human progression, called The Ascent of Man, was first illustrated in a best selling book uh, titled Early Man, written by University of California Berkeley professor F. Clark Howell. And the progression was printed in a 91 centimeter foldout on pages 41 to 45 in the 1965 edition and reprinted in both the 1968 and 1973 editions. So the original chart included 15 pictures that traced human evolution from Pliopithecus to Ramapithecus to Homo erectus, all the way to Cro-Magnon and ending with Homo sapiens. Okay, now, and, and this parade of human evolution really captured people's imagination. It was a very simple pictorial snapshot type of image that quickly communicated the evolutionary concept. So it was great in, in that sense for evolutionists. And, and like they say, a picture's worth a thousand words, <laughs> yeah. right? Uh, creationist human origin researcher Marvin Lu uh, Martin Lu Lubinow, author of the book Bones of Contention, concluded that uh, the, the human progression image has been one of the most successful tools ever used to promote human evolution. It constituted powerful visual proof for human evolution that even a small child could grasp. It was a masterpiece of Madison Avenue promotion. That's the way he put it. <laughs> Interesting way to put it. Yeah. So this parade has been prominently displayed in social science classes, biology classrooms, school bulletin boards for, for decades now. Yeah. And because of its graphic power, it's been kind of etched into the, the minds of billions of people worldwide. Iconic, or ironically, the progression was known to be fake when it was first published. The book that uh, included it, after noting uh, only that fragmentary fossil evidence existed for human evolution, openly admitted that the progression was drawn from largely manufactured or distorted evidence. Oh dear, yeah. okay. Yes, in, in the author's own words, many of the figures shown here have been built up from a few fragments a jaw, some teeth perhaps, and thus are products of educated guessing. Now, the author added that, even if later finds should dictate changes, uh, that is, even if the drawings are wrong, mm -hmm. these reconstructions serve a, a purpose in showing how these creatures might have looked. And the term might is in the original text, by the way. <laughs> right. Which just emphasizes again that the origins debate uh, is historical science. It's not operational yes. science, right? Yeah. No scientist today has ever observed these creatures, their guesses about what they might have been in the past, according to a, kind of an atheistic evolutionary philosophical idea. Not repeatable operational science done according to the scientific method. Um, now, uh, below is... Um, each of the 15 illustrations here in this book was a discussion of each picture, something that's rarely ever included today when the progression is shown because of how popular it's become. But note right away in the diagram that from Africanus, the main change aside from poor posture is really only the head. Right, and, and there are huge problems here. Neanderthals, even in 1970, weren't considered part of our evolutionary lineage. Uh, but actually another branch of the human family tree. Both modern humans and Neanderthals are today assumed to have, uh, have evolved from Homo erectus. Lubinow stresses that not that more recent fossil discoveries have revealed that the progression was inaccurate. No, the truth is far worse. Now, what he's pointing out here is that these were false depictions and were known 
to be fraudulent. They were known to be fraudulent at the time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. A few of these far worse examples he mentioned include the fact that the proto apes pictured weren't bipedal, yet are shown in yeah. the illustrations as being expertly bipedal. Uh, the bipedal apes shown in the evolutionary progression are thought to have um, lived long before evolutionists believed bipedalism had even evolved. Um, so the, the Howell text openly acknowledges this, admitting that although proto-apes and apes were quadrupedal, uh, all are shown here standing for purposes of comparison. Okay. So they're showing stuff that they know isn't true. <laughs> <laughs> well, even that admission isn't accurate. Uh, some of the creatures shown in, in the parade weren't even actually physically able to stand erect. <laughs> Furthermore, although the text describes them as standing, they are in fact drawing walk, they're, they're drawn walking. Uh, some of them have, have one foot in the air balancing on the other foot as they walk across the page. Mm -hmm. This gives, uh, 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 gives them a far more human-like appearance than if they were just standing. Right. Now, accurate comparisons would require showing their actual normal quadrupedal or, or knuckle-walking gait right. on four, four, not two. So, so this is the thing that many people don't understand when they see these so-called scientific images in textbooks. Right. They look so, you know, official and, and so on. But anyway, that's not all. We'll have to wait until we uh, we'll get back from our break to see even more. The Genesis account is the Rolls-Royce of creation books. It's a thorough verse-by-verse -verse analysis of the first 11 chapters of Genesis, revealing what the text means. Unlike most commentaries, it includes the additional step of providing cutting-edge scientific support for the history recorded in Genesis, because its author, Dr. Jonathan Safety, is a PhD scientist. Since science confirms the truths in God's Word, if both are properly interpreted, this nearly 800-page book makes a fantastic reference tool for pastors or anyone wanting to know what Genesis really means. Order your copy at creation.com. Okay, our subject this week is why the ape man image, you know, that classic ape to man image you see uh, everywhere is false. Yep. And, and the fact that it was known to be false when it was first made, and of course the point we're making at the end of the last segment is, people need to discern these things. When they see these images in books and, and so on, and they think, well, I mean, they wouldn't have just put it in here if, they, if it wasn't true. These are scientists, they must know all these things. Oh, yes, they Read do. some <laughs> of the fine print because you, you find out some interesting things. So, and the history anyway. of the image, like we're talking about on today's, on today's show. It's a little, little hard to get maybe at some of that information. But yep. uh, continuing on in the list of errors in the original ape to man depiction, this image, mm -hmm. another problem is that the size of the illustrations were greatly distorted. They show the, the first link in the progression as a very small animal uh, with, with, and, and with only two exceptions, uh, Diopithecus and Solo Man. Yeah. And uh, e each progressive link is drawn larger and taller progressively, standing up straighter and straighter uh, the more we move toward modern man. Now this isn't because of fossil or other empirical data, but rather it's the result of artistic license that allows the artist to distort the picture to conform to evolutionary theory. That's, right. that's where they were going with that. And, and you can see here that, that they also become progressively less hairy, right. which is also clearly uh, a result of artistic license and not fact. There's, there's no method that exists that allows anthropologists to determine the amount of body hair for these you know, fossil From bones, fossil bones. Uh, except uh, modern <laughs> humans, of course. And uh, they, were, they were clothed in flesh and hair by the artist. Furthermore, Howell openly admitted that the first link, uh, Pliopithecus, was not even considered to be an evolutionary link to humans in 1965 when the book was first published, but rather is now classified as an ancestor of the Gibbon line. So they just threw that in, knowing full well it was false, right. filled up yep. a gap in there. And, and, and not only that, uh, the second step, proconsul, uh, even though it's drawn to look more like a modern human, the picture caption admits that Proconsul is considered to be a very early ape, the ancestor of the chimpanzees and perhaps of the gorilla. Well, why include it then? <laughs> <laughs> well, to make it look like there's, there's lots of evidence for evolution by making the diagram appear you know, robust and full. Uh, for for Dryopithecus, the text acknowledges that the entire animal, although also appearing very human-like but stooped, is known only from a few jaws and teeth. 
and, and about the fourth step, uh, Oreopithecus, the, next, uh, the, the, the text actually states it's a likely side branch on man's family tree and not a human evolutionary ancestor. The text also notes that the next picture, Ramapithecus, is now thought by some experts to be the oldest of man's ancestors in a, in a direct line. Oreopithecus. Oreopithecus. Very good. Pretty cool. Um, so then, the progression should have begun with Ramapithecus, but they needed filler. Mm -hmm. So soon after the Time Life book was published in 1965, Elwin Simons of Yale found a more complete skull of Ramapithecus and convinced evolutionists that Ramapithecus had no part in human evolution. Yet, page 37 of the, the 1970 edition of the Time Life book, Early Man, shows a, a broken palate that included Ramapithecus in both the first step in the human evolution, jaw evolution parade, and in the human evolution parade. These pictures should have been revised in the new edition to reflect Simon's findings, but they weren't. But they weren't. And also, Solo Man, on the chart there, was known only by two shin bones and some fragments of skull. So pretty sketchy to be uh, shown so, so factually. And uh, today, it's, uh, it and, and Robustus are now interpreted as an evolutionary dead end in man's ancestry. Also of note is the fact that from Africanus to modern man, the bodies look remarkably similar, only the heads, most of which seem kind of out of place if you look at the, um, the pictures there on the bodies, yeah, yeah. They're, they're very different, they're more ape-like as we move backwards in time away from modern humans. Okay, now some people might argue that the text does openly point out many of the inaccuracies in the drawing, so it's not fraudulent. But then why include them? Right. Well, many casual readers would have just gotten the seemingly solid scientific impression, uh, even if they just glanced at the pictures in the book. Mm -hmm. So this visual image has effectively sold the concept of human evolution, even though the book revealed that this, this parade was fictitious. That's right. So we're going to look into this more when we come back in just one moment, and we'll see you then. Did you know that animals have genetic switches? These are regulatory regions of DNA that control the genes. Scientists have noticed that dramatic things can happen when a genetic switch is mutated. For instance, a mutated genetic switch can dramatically alter the appearance of stickleback fish or generate a great variety of coat colours in animals. Veterinary researcher Dr. Jean Leitner has suggested that God may have created genetic switches to facilitate variation, the switches having been created with a propensity to mutate without negatively affecting other traits. Modifications to genetic switches are not examples of evolution in action, even though they are often spoken of in that manner. Indeed, these changes don't involve new information, new genes arising, and evolutionists cannot explain the existence of the genetic switches in the first place. The more we learn about the complexity of genomes, the more they point to a super-intelligent master programmer. To find out more from Creation Ministries International, visit our website, creation.com. Our subject this week is why the ape-to-man image you see everywhere is false. Right. I mean, this ape-to-man image idea has been copied and updated throughout the years as evolutionists have tried to solidify their evidence for human evolution. National Geographic magazine produced one in uh, November 1985 in a realistic set of well-done drawings you can see there on your screen. Okay, however, rather than improving, this, this illustration in some ways is even less accurate. <laughs> Beginning with uh, Afarensis, the figures are not walking as they were in the Time Life book, but are shown as expert runners, <laughs> progressively running faster and with more grace, with arms swinging as the parade, as, as the, uh, the, the parade progresses toward uh, the, the fully human variety there. Right. <laughs> uh, now, the, the first heads in the progression are very ape-like. You know, the later heads look very negroid, and the last head and body is that of a tanned Caucasian. And so, so the, the major uh, body differences are that the, the arms are comparatively shorter, and the body is progressively less hairy as the progressing, uh, progressing to modern humans moves forward. The text does admit that the artist uh, speculated on skin tone and the amount of body hair and its texture and uh, that the relationships between the fossils pictured are still not fully understood. Right. Now, one of the, the main but false implications of these drawings of our supposed evolution from ape-like ancestors uh, called Pliopithecus that looks a lot like a chimp to yeah. modern humans is that there is a very straightforward single line 
from ape to humans that are, that's known. Several of the most prominent modern paleontologists like Donald Johansson, Tim White, Richard Leakey, Colin Graves, Bernard Wood, for example, have uh, uh, drastically different ideas about how our family tree, human family tree, supposedly goes. Right, and, and another important fact is that there's no evidence that, uh, that any creature uh, walked bent over as, uh, as, as this progression shows. Right. Um, when, when apes walk on all fours, they, they knuckle walk and only appear to be bent over when compared to humans. This is the reason it's been assumed that as our uh, common ancestor uh, with apes evolved into humans, their stoop became less pronounced. However, no evidence exists of a creature hovering between a two-legged and a four-legged stance as the progression shows. Right. Now, in recent years, the parade itself has evolved due to recent fossil finds. More detailed study of the fossil record and DNA analysis, and uh, fortunately, the, the new view refuting the parade is now being presented uh, in some mass media publications. Yeah, for example, uh, a Newsweek article pictured the parade as the old view, and next to it showed the new view, right. uh, a complex bush that is very different from uh, the now, now famous progression. And some criticisms from an evolutionary standpoint are more blunt, concluding that the gradual progression from crouching to standing as shown in the series is almost certainly wrong. Okay, now even if um, not presented exactly like the modern diagram, the progression of apes to humans has been a common theme in evolutionary literature since about 1870, usually with obvious racist implications. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The earliest evolutionary progression drawings usually showed evolution from the most primitive to the most advanced animals, starting with an amoeba, then a fish, then to a bird, then a lizard, a monkey, an African, right. or some other primitive human, and if there was a modern human depicted there, in the last picture, it's a Caucasian. Yeah, <laughs> some examples of the evolutionary progression shows uh, only the head profiles. Uh, common illustrations were an evolutionary progression from supposedly the most primitive human, typically an Aborigine or an African, to the most advanced human, a Caucasian, hmm. often appearing Nordic or, or Scandinavian, that, that type of, of look. Uh, examples showing profiles that stress the change uh, in the facial angle from horizontal to vertical were common. Um, Africans are shown as being the most primitive and uh, the Nordic looking men as being the most advanced. Yeah, huh. and even, even modern illustrations uh, show evidence of this racism. For example, many uh, show the figures less hairy and, and the skin color getting lighter as evolution progresses. Now, uh, you know, the progression is widely recognized as a gross distortion by uh, academics, but it keeps being perpetuated amongst, you know, the layperson. Yeah, how is that even allowed in textbooks? In our politically correct society today, mm -hmm. how is that even allowed? Amazing. What's the conclusion here? Yeah. Uh, well, Martin, Martin Lubinow uh, states, the parade is raw propaganda, <laughs> brilliant propaganda, but raw, raw nonetheless. And this propaganda has, has no doubt uh, influenced millions of people to accept the Darwinian worldview of human evolution and is by far the most popular icon of evolution that has ever been presented anywhere uh, in the media for decades. Right, and the fact is that the, the once popular fresco showing a single file of marching hominids becoming even uh, more, ever more vertical, tall and hairless and pale is absolute fiction and informed evolutionists agree. And we'll do that. The reason that the Creation Answers book is so popular is because it covers a huge range of topics and answers more than 60 of the most asked questions about Genesis and the creation evolution issue. Questions like, what is the evidence for God's existence? Could the days in Genesis 1 be long periods of time? How did all the animals fit on Noah's Ark? Does radioisotope dating prove that the Earth is very old? Where do dinosaurs fit into the Bible? And many more. To order your copy, visit creation.com. Okay, welcome back. We're going to wrap up this week's show with a... Uh, um uh, news article. Mm -hmm. Well, what's going on? There's, there's always something happening regarding creation evolution. So mm -hmm. this is, uh, the title of the article is, Study Finds Aging Starts Before Birth. Mm -hmm. Amazing. So you age in your first nine months. A new study, I'll just read the article or we'll, we'll, we'll read it here. A new study has found that aging may begin even before we are born in the womb. The University of Cambridge-led team made this determination by exposing rats to situations similar to those faced by pregnant women. 
They then examined the protective ends of chromosomes called telomeres, which deteriorate with age to simulate a reduction in oxygen available to the fetal body due to a high altitude or smoking mother. Researchers placed gestating rats in an environment with uh, with seven percent less oxygen. So far, that's what it says so far. Right. And of course, we know babies age when they're in the room, but what they're actually talking about here is aging in the sense of degenerating. Right? Now that's what we're getting. Yeah. So, yeah. and they continued, once these babies were born, they were found to have the aging indicators of shorter telomeres and more blood vessel problems, which exposed them to an earlier risk of heart disease. Mm. Both groups of infants with and without standard oxygen levels benefited when the mother was given antioxidant supplements while pregnant. Health habits during gestation also helped to positively influence the child's future uh, heart health. So, just a kind of an interesting article here showing that, um, yeah, basically uh, what we know with science, what it shows now is that basically we're programmed uh, to die in a sense. We're programmed to die. It's mutations. Uh, if you, it, mutations is what God uses to kill us. <laughs> if you want to think <laughs> of it in, in a morbid sense, yeah, well, you know, God's got us, got to get us to heaven somehow, and it's got a wonder number of variety of ways to do that, so yeah. mutations, um, and, and it's just interesting, the mutational degradation starts the very first time, well, D John Sanford, we did a show uh, uh, with some of his research there showing how humans are heading for extinction mm -hmm. because of mutations at a phenomenal rate. Some of these mutations that accumulate in, in individuals are passed on to the next generation so that every new generation of humans starts life off with more mutations than the previous generation. Right. And you can, you can see that episode here uh, at this link. That's right. But, um, so far from the evolutionary concept that we're getting better and better and better over time. Because of mutations. Because of yeah. mutations. What the show actually uh, revealed is that we're getting worse and worse and worse over time. Because that's why everybody dies. You know, here they're talking about the fact that you you start aging, uh, you know, before you're actually born. Well, the reason everybody's going to die, as we mentioned, is because of mutations. You've got about what sixty thousand new mutations in your body after you're forty years old. That's why you're going to get wrinkly and saggy, and you're yeah, eventually going to yeah. die. And that's what the scripture says: that the wages of sin is death. Yeah. We all know that we're sinners. We all know that we're going to die, and uh, mutations are going to. Gonna kill gonna us. Gonna get yeah. rid of us. So. The average the average cell in a 15 year old has 6,000 mutations. Your average cell, some more, some less. The average skin cell in a in a 60 year old has 40,000 mutations. Yeah. No amount of oil of delay is gonna stop that. Or do, <laughs> you're not gonna fix that. It's mutations that are driving us your your skin and all of your vital organs. Same things happening there. It's mutations. Sorry. That, uh, that drive us to death, and uh, it, it was just an interesting study. <laughs> Get more of this information by looking at a free digital copy of Creation Magazine. Go to creation.com slash freemag. And next week, we're going to look at the flat earth myth and the Bible. We'll see you next week. <laughs>